In this lecture, we're going to be talking about exact match match type, which is the final form of positive match types that we're going to be discussing in more detail. Exact match uses brackets, regular brackets enclosed around your keyword to ensure your ad will only show for, for queries containing your exact keyword without any additional words or phrases appended or prepended. Negative keywords are not needed to supplement exact match, and that sort of makes sense because the only search terms that are triggering my keywords are my exact keyword. Or we'll see in a minute, not, not my exact keyword necessarily, but we're not gonna have additional words, phrases appended or prepended to it like we could have in every one of the other match types, broad, broad match, modified, and phrase. Exact match generates the highest click through rates and, and also the most expensive CPCs. And like we mentioned, high click through rates is great. I'll have a higher quality score typically, uh, but not always, but typically. And higher CPCs because my exact match keywords are typically my best keywords. They're typically the keywords that most of the competitors are that really want to get on top of. So like buy leather office chairs online. Anyone who's selling office chairs online, it wants that keyword. So they'll bid more aggressively on that exact version of it. Let's take a look at a, at a couple potential examples and what ads will show and will not show for. Leather desk chairs in brackets will show for leather desk chairs. Buy, buy leather desk chairs, even though that entire phrase is included, there's an extra word that's not in my keyword in the search term and it will not show. Office accessories in brackets, will show for office accessories, will not show for office accessories for sale online. Again, even though the phrase is there in the right order, for sale online are additional words that in the query that do not appear in my keyword, therefore will not trigger that exact match keyword. Another example, extra padded chairs, extra padded chair without the S can show. Plurals and slight misspellings, as we'll talk about in a second, can show. High quality extra padded chair is a search term that will not show, even though it probably is a good search term for me to bid on, which is one of the downsides of exact match. Exact match, you're going to get the most specific traffic to your site, you're gonna have the most control, but it, you'll really not be able to get any new ideas. If your budget is super, super constricted, and you're, you're in the position, whether it be just from your own circumstance or the money you have available, that every dollar has to be spent as best as, pro, as, best as possible right away, there's, no, there's, there's very little margin for error, then exact match is your best friend. If there is margin for error, and there should be margin for error, error and we'll talk about how important margin, margin for error is when we talk about the lr lin Rodnitsky ratio, when we talk about auditing accounts that have data, there needs to be a certain level, level of error in the account because that shows that you're trying to find new ideas. And finding new ideas for both negative keywords and positive keywords is how you're going to ultimately outperform your competition. And I've said this a number of times, like broad match, broad match, modified phrase match, they all allow you to find new ideas for both negative keywords and positive keywords using the search terms report, using actual data. And actual data, what's actually happening in, in your account, how people are actually searching for your products and services, what's triggering, what's triggering your keywords is the most valuable data. We spoke about keyword research a couple lectures ago, right? We're gonna try to find things on by asking people using the Google Keyword Planner. There's no better place to actually get information about how your campaign's performing is from the search terms report. And the search terms report is really valuable when it shows you additional search terms that are outside of the specific constraints of your keyword. And you won't get that with exact match. And again, that's not a reason to not use exact match. Exact match is great. Exact match is where you want to bid super aggressive on your super high level, top performing, high converting keywords, the low hanging fruit. Go for exact match. Bid as high as possible until you're not becoming profitable anymore. Squeeze as much, squeeze as much return on ad spend out of your exact match keywords. Use them. Definitely don't have an account without exact match. They're extremely important. But do whatever you can to have a to have a have a campaign that's more dynamic. Have a campaign that doesn't only rely on exact match because the beautiful um, revelations of Google Ads will come when you when you when you discover all the ideas that you could capitalize on profitably that you'll that will be presented to you through broad match, broad match modified, and phrase match, keyword match type. So that's what I encourage you to do. A couple things to know about exact match. Google has made a bunch of changes to exact match over the years, and here's where we're holding now. Um, misspellings. So if a if chair is spelled C H A R E in the search term, it could still trigger your search for C, C H A I R, let's say. Singular or plural form. So if my exact match keyword is leather desk chair and somebody searches for leather desk chairs, plural, or vice versa, 
Google remains or Google retains the right to show an ad and trigger that exact match keyword stemming. So upholster and upholster ring. So if somebody's looking for upholst, if my keyword is upholster shop near me and somebody searches for upholster ring shop near me, Google retains the right, even if my keyword is exact match to trigger an ad through that exact match keyword abbreviation. So if my keyword says New York City or New York and somebody searches for NY or NYC, Google retains the right to show my ad, even though it's an exact match keyword that said New York inside the brackets. This is an interesting one. Reordered words with the same meaning. So Google is extremely vague on how they treat this because this sounds really like broad match modified. Again, of course, the real big difference is it has to only be these words. It can't be any additional words and it can't be any words missing. Um, but if it has the same exact meaning, according to Google, they might trigger your ad. So if my keyword says men's shoes and somebody searches for shoes men's and Google cannot differentiate a meaning or some sort of intent between the two, then Google retains the right to trigger that exact match keyword. Google does say they won't reorder phrases like JFK to LGA to LGA to JFK because that obviously has a specific, specifically and clear different meaning. Another big one, addition or removal of function words such as in, to, for, but, a, the. So if my exact match keyword is chairs for office, Google retains the right to remove the function word and ignore it from my exact match keyword. So if somebody searches for office chairs or chairs office, then Google retains the right to trigger that exact match keyword because they're removing that function word of for. Implied words. So Google gives this example on their site, Daydream VR headset, VR stands for virtual reality. So Google, if Google knows that Daydream is a virtual reality headset company, and that's how they peg your search term, then if a person searches for a Daydream headset, they might consider the word VR to be implied, and it means the same thing as your keyword they still won't show daydream headset for sale because for sale was not part of your keyword. And you didn't necessarily imply that, but if it's specifically inherent to that product, then Google retains the right to trigger your exact match keyword. Synonyms is a new one that Google is now showing exact match keywords for. If your exact match keyword is bathing suits, Google might show or might trigger that exact match keyword if somebody searches for swimming suits because swimming and bathing, according to Google, are synonyms. Does Google have a list of synonyms? No, unfortunately they don't. But you'll get a sense of what these synonyms are by monitoring the search terms report. Same search intent. So this is something which is really vague and really frustrating and really, it's honestly really irksome to me because it's just like Google trying to make more money and like, come on, like you're offering us exact match, right? Just let it be exact match. Like stop squeezing every ounce of control out of us like in your ruthless quest to maximize your ad dollars, right? It's just taking so much autonomy away from the advertiser and it's just unfair that we have to play by these rules. And it, it bothers me, but this is what they say. So we have to play by the rules. Same search intent. If somebody searches for, this is, and again, this is, a, this is an example that Google themselves gives. If your exact match keyword in your account is images royalty free, and somebody searches for free copyright images, a totally separate word, but Google views it as the exact same intent, then Google reserves the right to trigger an exact match keyword for images royalty fee free to show that ad. Luckily, for any of you that are interested, I'm gonna show you a script uh, written by, by Daniel Gilbert and his team over at Brain Labs to make exact match exact again. And that's gonna be by, the script is gonna be mining your search terms report constantly and every day, every hour, adding more negative keywords until you're sort of left with your just your exact match versions of your keywords. So there is a script available to make exact match exact again, which is awesome. It's really neat, it's fun to use, it's, it's really worthwhile checking out if you wanna do that. But with everything that I just mentioned, with Google taking away all this control, with Google not, you know, with Google making exact match, exact match maybe, you know, this annoying little in-between thing, exact match still is pretty exact. Because you have to remember that Google has all these little rules like stemmings and abbreviations and reordered words and same intent, but Google will not show your ads with additional words, except for this same search intent. Like, it, that's really about swapping out a specific word for a synonym. Google won't show your ads with additional words or with less words appended or prepended to your search term, except when you have like we, that VR example, which is rare, I haven't seen that much. It's still quite exact. You're still getting the benefits of exact. You're still gonna be paying a lot more. Your click-through rates will be higher. You'll be getting the most amount of relevant traffic to your, to your 
website by far when you're using exact match match type. That's exact match. Again, make sure your, your campaigns and ad groups have a mixture of all of them. Now you might have broken, you might have broken out your ad groups or even your campaigns by match type. And that's fine. That's a strategy that we've done a lot. We'll have a campaign for office chairs, exact office chairs, broad office chairs phrase. Um, or ad groups broad phrase exact. That, and we've spoken about that as a potential ex idea for structuring your hierarchy. Um, but it's totally fine. And in fact, in the last couple of years, almost all the accounts that I work on and that I build and we do here at the agency, all the match types are mixed in into, into each ad group. It's much better to just thematically structure your ad groups with themes than by match type because you could control the different bids. The exceptions would potentially be if you're bidding based on a CPA in a CPA basis, you might want to segment out match types by at the ad group level so you can control your CPA bids and you can bid a higher CPA for exact match. But not, not that a, an exact match is worth more, the conversion is worth more, but you could get more volume for certain types of keywords um, if they're separated out by match type. So how you structure your ad groups with regards to match type might be influenced by the bidding strategies being used. But in most cases, you could have all these different match types together inside one ad group, especially if you're bidding manual CPC or enhanced TPC, you have nothing to worry about. So that's an example. Those are, that's an overview of all the positive match types. In the next lecture, we're going to jump into negative match type and um, open up a whole can of worms there. And I look forward to seeing you guys very soon in a couple seconds.